I'm Amy Dallin, and welcome to the DC Fandom panel for Batman Three Jokers. Sorry, how many Jokers? Three? Three Jokers? That's what I'm here to find out. And I am joined, I'm delighted to say, by very special guests, writer Jeff Johns and artist Jason Fabok. Welcome, thank you so much. Good to see you. Hey, Jay. Hey, guys. We have been hearing about this for a long time, ever since certain cryptic hints got dropped, and we are finally almost about to see this when Batman Three Jokers drops on August 25th. So first off, can you tell us what, what is it? What's the story? Three Jokers, what does it mean? The story idea is essentially that there's more than one Joker operating Gotham City and Batman, Barbara Gordon, and Jason Todd are looking into what that means. And it's the mystery of what the Joker's up to, why there are multiple sightings of him. And we dive deep into the obviously personal connections the Joker has with each one of these characters, with Bruce, Barbara, and Jason. And then the mystery goes deeper and deeper into a pretty twisting and turning rabbit hole. That is the Joker's, you know, identity. Now, was it always part of the idea that you were going to follow more than one focus, not just Batman's perspective on the Joker? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's been so long, honestly, since we first started started talking about this story. But I do remember specifically, like, what I always, uh, Jay and I talked a lot about is what I was really excited about exploring emotionally was how the Jokers affected these three specific People, you know, Batman. I'm Amy Dallin, and welcome to the DC Fandom panel for Batman Three Jokers. Sorry, how many Jokers? Three? Three Jokers? That's what I'm here to find out. And I am joined, I'm delighted to say, by very special guests, writer Jeff Johns and artist Jason Fabok. Welcome, thank you so much. Good to see you. Hey, Jay. Hey, guys. We have been hearing about this for a long time, ever since certain cryptic hints got dropped, and we are finally almost about to see this when Batman Three Jokers drops on August 25th. So first off, can you tell us what, what is it? What's the story? Three Jokers, what does it mean? The story idea is essentially that there's more than one Joker operating Gotham City, and Batman, Barbara Gordon, and Jason Todd are looking into what that means. And it's the mystery of what the Joker's up to, why there are multiple sightings of him. And we dive deep into the, obviously, personal connections the Joker has with each one of these characters, with Bruce, Barbara, and Jason. And then the mystery goes deeper and deeper into a pretty twisting and turning rabbit hole. That is the Joker's, you know, identity. Now, was it always part of the idea that you were going to follow more than one focus, not just Batman's perspective on the Joker? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's been so long, honestly, since we first started, started talking about this story. But I do remember specifically, like, what I always, uh, Jay and I talked a lot about is 
what I was really excited about exploring emotionally was how the Jokers affected these three specific people. You know, Batman on se several times, Barbara Gordon and Jason Todd have gone on through horrible tragedies caused by the Joker and inflicted by the Joker, and they've come out of it and emerged it in different ways. Where Barbara healed right emotionally, I think for the most part, there's still some obviously trauma there. Jason, I think, healed very wrong. They both have their struggles with what happened, but comparing and contrasting these three people and what the Joker's done to them is what got me excited about the story because we've all been through tragedy and trauma and how you process it and how you deal with it incorporated into who you are and who you become is is really fascinating and and the scars that are left physically and emotionally that's really what the story is about and exploring that with these three characters wonderful characters um it gave me so much appreciation for jason todd and barbara i, I mean even bruce in a new way but that's that's what the story is about. Jay, what was the appeal for you in signing on to this book? I've been searching for that that Batman project that I've always dreamed of drawing, you know, since I was a kid and then since I broke into the industry. I was looking for a, a Batman story that was really uh, deep, emotional, uh, classic feeling. And when Jeff had sort of pitched this, this grand idea back when we were working on Justice League, it just, I, I immediately just felt like this was the story I, I had. always been searching to draw. And when Jeff and I met at, uh, in Burbank there and, and did our story uh, pitch session where we wrote out the entire story on the, on the big whiteboard, after hearing everything, I remember saying to him, like, this feels like a classic Batman story. Like, this really feels like this could be a classic. We had both kind of come up with similar ideas separate from each other and then brought them together. And it was like, it just felt, like it was it was meant to be well i can't say what they are because i don't want to spoil them but i mean you could you could tell us everything right now yeah. as you're saying yeah, yeah not yet uh but uh, everything has just felt like it was it's it's just the way that it's meant to be and, and i really feel like this will be a book that i finally get to kind of make my stamp on the dc universe in a really big meaningful way and on batman's history in a big meaningful way and to me, that's very attractive. I've, I've been searching for legacy uh, with my career and wanting to really, uh, you know, kind of uh, create things that are going to stand the test of time. And I feel like this story is going to be something that does that. Hey, you're putting so much pressure on me now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, why is this story for you and why Jay to work with? The best thing about comics, someone said, asked me once, like, what are your favorite stories? And I said, well, all my favorite stories that I've worked on are with the people I love and like Jay. Um, Jay had, and I had a great time on Justice League together and we talk a lot and we talk about the story and the characters and why I tell the story, what's the emotion behind it, you know, what's the purpose of the story. So working with Jay was, that was the ultimate, you know, reason. But also I, I love Batman and Joker and Batgirl and Red Hood. I've never really told a story, Batman story. I've done Batman Earth One, but that's a different, younger you know, kind of um, low tech version of Batman in my head. And, and this was the first time I, I had the chance to write a real Batman story in continuity with the Joker. And there's so many amazing stories out there about the Joker and Batman. And, and it's like, well, I didn't want to tell another one unless we had a, a different story, a, a story that looked at it a little bit differently and explored something new. What are a couple that people might want to look at that inspired or that you're responding to in this legacy? Well, a lot of it's like, um, I think the era really, like the post-crisis era, the early eight, like Batman Year One by Frank Miller and 
the killing joke, ultimately death in the family. Back half of the 80s was a time for the Bat family. And they got grounded. Like we talk about, you know, stories they used to tell, like all those prestige fam format books like Batman the Cult that were these really cool grounded character driven mysteries that focused on something emotional that Batman was dealing with. It's super fun to have all these big bombastic stories about the whole universe being, you know, involved in Joker's craziness. But we really wanted to get back to the this grounded street level, character driven, smaller story. Like even though the mystery is very big, it's just a smaller story involving a handful of characters. And that was the attraction to it is like, can we do this cool self-contained Batman and Joker story? And it's influenced by a lot of other you know, things, not just comic books, but life, real life, you know, beyond that. But yeah, it's the the history that Batman's had with the Joker and these characters is really what's informed it, like all of it. It's not a, a parallel Earth story. It's not a, it's these three Jokers are not from different Earths. Not a dream, not a hoax, not an imaginary story. Yeah, no, it's it's all, we try to make it as grounded and personal as possible. That's That was our goal. What were some of the influences on the artistic side, Jay? I know you mentioned, what was your introduction to Batman? My introduction to Batman goes back to when I was maybe seven or eight with uh, Batman 1989, the Tim Burton movie. My aunt had got had bought me uh, the bat wing, the bat plane toy for Christmas. And, and I was like, well, I don't have a Batman figure to go with it. So my mom went to the Toys R Us a couple of days later, got me a Batman figure. And from that point on, I, I was really just absorbed into this world of Batman. It wasn't until I read Batman Hush that I really was blown away by the art in a comic book. And that was Jim Lee's, you know, art in that book. Just really spoke to me. And I started thinking, like, if I could draw anything, like, that's the kind of artist I'd want to be. Just everything is big and bold. As I've been learning and studying and trying to become a better artist, I've been bringing a lot of Neil Adams and uh, Jim Lee and, and David Finch, who was my mentor, and even a lot of Gary Frank stuff. With this book, I've been going back to a lot of Brian Boland because we want things to have kind of a, the feel that you had from Killing Joke, uh, both in the way that we're telling the story and also artistically. And so I've been going back to a lot of Brian Boland's art and just really studying his the line work and the way that he draws his panels and the way that he's telling his story uh, visually. And uh, so I've brought a lot of that into my work with this and it's kind of given my work a, a little bit of a different feel. And I, and I hope it kind of has like a little bit, uh, I hope it has a timeless feel to it because th that's the one thing with art, uh, you know, some of the great comic books, the great, Batman books uh, have a timeless quality to them. And so I want this book to feel like it could fit in, in in a bunch of different times. It could have been something drawn in the past. It could be something drawn in the future or the present. That was something that Brian Boland and Alan Moore really discussed a lot in Killing Joke was that he really wanted it to have a timeless feel. And I, I uh, whereas in Killing Joke, Brian Boland really referenced a lot of the 1940s Kind of that classic 1940s golden age i'm kind of referencing a lot of the 1980s when i think about batman in my head it has that 80s aesthetic to it and i think that fans who have been reading batman for for years and years and have have really like dived into things like the animated series and the, and the movie movies and, and and especially the classic comics i think they're going to when they read this book they're going to see like a ton of little Easter eggs and subtle designs and sometimes not so subtle designs from those different things that I really have loved. I'm not afraid to wear those, uh, uh, those influences on my sleeve. I, I, I just, I feel like it, it's just part of me. And, and as a fan first of comics, I, those are things that get me excited as a fan when I see them. And so I'm, I've really tried to put a lot of that in there along with some new designs and new takes on things as well. So it's kind of a, you know, an amalgamation of all these different things that have really influenced me. I hope when the, when the fans read it, I hope that they get a kick out of all these little things that I've put in there. And maybe one day Jeff and I will do a commentary track or something. Cause there's, there's all kinds of little things that I've, 
I put in there. I hope people will find them and point them all out, but I would love to go through and just talk about them all one day. You heard it here first. Please publish extensive lists so that all of us can enjoy everything everyone else is finding in the book when it comes out. Yeah. In approaching the the more than one Joker situation for this book, how did you, this is for both of you, distinguish them? How did you approach designing distinct versions of the Joker? I guess the the eras or the versions of the Joker that Jay and I kind of identified, we call the first one the criminal, because when Joker first showed up, he was more like a mobster and a little more grounded and a little less theatrical. And then he evolved and there's a big point where he becomes kind of this prankster, where he's just loud and colorful, sometimes even a little campy. And then he evolved into, I think, the more modern era we call the comedian, which is a little scarier, a little bit more frightening, where he has this danger that's within him that that harkens back to the original, but also incorporates some of the loud, colorful fun from the prankster. And so we just basically call them the criminal, the prankster, and the comedian. Each one of them comes at things from a different point of view and has a different MO. And they're all off-center, way off-center, but they're all just slightly different from one another. I have to give Jay massive props. Jay put so much of his, you know, passion and talent into this book. I feel like sometimes I feel guilty, like I have it easy. I just have to write it. Like he has to actually make it come to life. He's directing it. He's making this thing real. And when you see the emotional quality he puts into his faces, the body language, the detail, as he says, the influences and Easter eggs and everything he's put into this, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. It's, you know, it's just going to be worth looking at just for that art. Um, Story aside, it's just a gorgeous book. On the artist's side, how did you approach those distinctions? Hmm. Again, it was, it was going back and looking at a lot of what other artists have done and going through the history of these characters and seeing the different ways that people have drawn them. You know, we went through a whole bunch of different designs and different versions of them and even, you know, even designs that were out of continuity and and whatnot. Maybe one day I'll be able to finally, I'll be able to show some of that stuff. But in the end, it was, you know, the the criminal Joker goes right back to Batman uh, number one from 1940. And so that design was right there. He, he has a big trench coat and he wears a white shirt with his black tie and he's got the purple uh, suit underneath. I decided to draw him actually looking a little older. He looks a little more grizzled in our book. He doesn't laugh. He's, he's the opposite of what you would think. Of. He's very creepy. Yeah, he is actually my favorite Joker in the book. Because of that factor, it's just there's something off-putting about that fact. It's fun to play that up in the book and, and play up that look. And then the prankster Joker I drew from the great Cesar Romero version from, you know, the 1966 show. And the, the costume is a little bit of that, and a little bit of the Batman the Animated Series look, and a little bit of that classic sort of Neil Adams, 60s, 70s looking Joker. And then the comedian one is really just right out of the killing joke. It was just line bowling. And we play with some different looks for these characters throughout the book uh, that is how how some funny moments to them but uh to keep the mystery of it uh, i i didn't want to change their physical appearance too too much from each other you know because batman's the greatest detective ever you think he would notice this thing well there's a reason why he doesn't notice these things it's because they all look very similar to each other yeah there's there's so many really cool little nods to those classic books especially with the covers that we're doing there's nine of these premium variants where I went through and we picked out different jokers from different eras. And so we really think that fans will really, you know, they'll want to collect all these different covers. And I really wanted to make to make them so that you can hang them on your wall. Our book has a lot of nine panel grids and it'd be neat to have them on your wall in nine panel grids and maybe change them out and, and things like that. So yeah, a lot of fun. I, I love, I love comic book history and I love playing off of what's come before honoring your history is is very important 
And I think that, especially with comics, we have a great history of um, incredible artists and uh, beautiful comic books. And, and it's, it's so much fun as a fan myself to be able to play with that and to hopefully honor them. I want to honor the past artwork and the past artists and writers and creators who've worked on this, these characters. And to me, that's very important to do. So I'm actually curious, how will that apply to, like, obviously you had to make a lot of choices as well with your leads with Batman and Barbara and Jason. So without giving too much away, how did you decide which versions of those characters to give us? You know, the most, I guess the most modern, you know, the moment is now. So mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne is the Batman that's been around for a long time. Barbara's the Barbara that's been through everything she's been through in the comic books. Same with Jason. So we, we wanted to go post trauma and, and, you know, and have some time that they've, you know, they've incorporated that and processed it the best they can. And it's, it's become part of who they are um, for good and bad. And uh, so that's really why we started with the character. Now. Now. Yeah. Well, we can't wait to see how it all unfolds, how the mysteries get solved, which I did not succeed in wringing out of either of you in this interview. But thank you so much for joining us, Jason and Jeff. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Jay. Great seeing you all. Yeah, thank you uh, to all the fans who are tuning in right now for these DC Fandom panels. You can get Batman Three Jokers number one Tuesday, August 25th at open and operating retailers and participating digital outlets. Thank you again and enjoy DC Fandom. See everybody.